please note the disclaimer. A lot of us didn't grow up on TV sitcoms or movies that much. Many of us grew up on flash animations or internet characters. Many of these internet memories bring me a smile and a laugh even to this day. So today, I'd like to honor these memories with a list of the top 10 internet memories. Many of these creators still produce regular content to this day. I'll post a link to each number in the description in case you are interested in checking them out. Anyway, sit back and enjoy the countdown. Number 10. Yahtzee Zero Punctuation. A lot of these internet sensations tend to fly under the radar, but I can't seem to find any friends under 40 who haven't at least heard of Yahtzee. He's been doing short video game reviews for the last six to seven years. While some people may find his videos a little too crass and narcissistic at times, he's provided me with a lot of laughs over the years. You can pretty much always be sure you're going to see the negative side of a game when you watch his reviews, which is kind of refreshing in a sea of large company organizations like GameSpot and IGN that just seem to throw 10 out of 10s at every massive game company out there. Like him or hate him, Yahtzee has done a lot of insightful reviews over the years, and I still get a good laugh out of his videos. Number 9. Newgrounds.com This one's a really old one, so some of you might not have heard of it. The old Newgrounds slogan was, The problems of the future, today. And that is exactly what it was. It was a wild west of dark flash animations about assassinations, ultraviolence, and everything controversial about our modern society. A place where any flash animator could express their opinions. Nowadays, it's become a lot more mainstream and has been cleaned up quite a bit. Internet sensations like Ego Raptor started off here before YouTube essentially took over the world. Nowadays, it just feels like every Flash animator on the site just does Pokemon Flashes with Ego Raptor style faces. Don't get me wrong, it's still got tons of talented Flash animators on the site, and if you've ever tried it, Flash animation is really tough to do well. But sadly, it all mostly gets posted to YouTube whether the creator likes it or not. Pretty much every talented Flash animator I've ever heard of started on Newgrounds. And there's a reason for that. It's the deviant art of Flash animation. A melting pot of Flash animations from every walk of life. I recommend giving the site a visit. Number 8. Screw Attack. I can't help it, I just get such a chuckle out of these guys. They started doing silly short clips about video games years ago, and eventually moved on to massive successes like... I don't know if you've heard of Death Battle? These guys started the top 10 craze before it was even popular. This episode of Death Battle is brought to you by Slim Jim! Nowadays, I tend to get put off by their excessive marketing and product placement, but these guys were a great internet memory for me. These guys have been making me laugh for years on end, and I hope they keep producing stuff. Number 7. Angry Video Game Nerd. Cinemassacre, AVGN, whatever you want to call him. James Rolfe has been doing videos for nearly 10 years now. I almost think it's a shame he's become so popular because I really like his reviews, but I just don't care about the AVGN merchandise, video games, or the movies. I just enjoy watching a guy with a passion for video making keep doing what he loves. But sadly, a bit like Frozen, I tend to get tired of being swamped by fan hype and merchandise. AVGN started doing reviews about consoles and video games before his popularity just exploded. Something about AVGN just swearing like a sailor as he cursed his way through the worst video games in history was very charming and pleasant to watch. I mean, would you really need this to clean out a game? It's just as good for cleaning out your ass! Like you touch the top of the building, you die, you touch the ceiling, you die, you touch the floor, you die, too far to the right, you die, too far to the left, you die, you die, you die, you die, 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 die. For me, I think it took me back to that childhood excitement of playing video games as a kid, and that indescribable joy of playing your favorite game. I guess many of us could all relate to James a bit in his endless passion of playing video games, even if he got his share of crappy games. The one thing that's always bothered me though is I've never liked his main theme song. Not from day one! Over the tenish years I've watched AVGN, I've always skipped over his one to two minute main theme song. 
But I think I'm alone on that one, as there's so many YouTube remixes for the AVGN theme that'll make your head spin. Either way though, nitpicks aside, I'm glad I can still visit AVGN and check out his latest videos. He's an internet memory that I still thoroughly enjoy. Number 6 Team 4 stars, Dragon Ball Z Abridged. <laughs> oh no, my face! My precious modeling career! This one probably doesn't come as much of a surprise to anyone. I absolutely adore Dragon Ball, and Dragon Ball Z Abridged makes the show even funnier. The Team 4 Star team is probably the most talented group of non-professional voice actors I've ever seen. This show, oh god, there go my organs. In fact, quite often, the voice acting is so incredibly sharp that it outshines the professional voice actors in the DBZ English dub. If you've heard of Dragon Ball Z, chances are you've heard of Team 4 Star. It's probably the most polished, quick-witted, and clever abridged series out there. And I can't think of a single friend I haven't shown it to who hasn't loved it. I'd say check Dragon Ball Z abridged out, but chances are you already have. Number 5. Movie Bob. Escape to the movies and the big picture. Movie Bob is a really in-depth look at movies that tend to be so insightful and sharp that I tend to have to watch episodes twice to get bits I missed. His videos tend to consist of five-ish minute rants on film genre, criticism, large film brands such as Star Wars, and society in general. Personally, I get a real kick out of this guy's short five-minute videos. I'd recommend checking him out. As with the others, I've attached a link to the description. Number four. Extra credits. These guys do insightful, clever, and thought-provoking looks on video games and ways we can improve them. If you play video games at all, I definitely recommend checking extra credits out. But most of all, I just seem to respect them ethically. Whenever I'm not sure how to deal with something on YouTube, or how to handle a difficult YouTube situation, I just tend to ask myself, what would Dan and James do? They've been through The Escapist, Penny Arcade, they've run charity drives, and over the years, they've finally found a home on YouTube. And frankly, I hope they stay settled on YouTube for a long time yet. And number three... You've got to be kidding me. Red vs. Blue. Rooster Teeth. That was the second worst throw ever. Have you ever tried to make a 12-year running massive video series, essentially consisting of Halo soldiers bobbing their heads up and down? You ever wonder why we're here? It's one of life's great mysteries, isn't it? Rooster Teeth managed this somehow with Red vs. Blue, and it even got a global DVD release. They added a story as they got to their sixth season, but the show was mainly about watching the Red and Blue Team soldiers mess about and annoy each other with some of the most quotable and clever lines you'll ever hear. Let me get this straight. We're going to steal a bomb from our enemies. A bomb that can be remotely detonated, I might add. And then we're going to bring it back to our base and all huddle around it. What a great plan. Well, sure, it sounds stupid when you say it like that. Go on, let's move! I don't if you've ever played Halo or any of its sequels, Chances are you've heard of this show. The show's humor comes entirely from the brilliant vocal interplay between characters. I still find myself quoting Red vs. Blue even today. Not only that, but they've gone on to produce tons of other series as well as this one. If you haven't already, I'd recommend checking them out. And coming in at number two... Nostalgia Crick. Remember that really bad movie you saw when you were a kid? Chances are Nostalgia Critic has done a review on it, and made it absolutely hilarious to watch. Essentially, Nostalgia Critic are videos reviewing really, really bad movies. But they're not just angry swear rants. They're clever commentaries on popular culture and the film genre in general. You can feel the effort this guy just puts into his videos every time. I tend to refer to Nostalgia Critic a lot because I just like Doug as a person so much and everything he stands for in his videos. Maybe it's just all in his character, but I feel like our views on things tend to be very similar a lot of the time. Whenever I'm in doubt, I tend to remind myself that well-made, smart videos can break into YouTube because Doug managed to do it so successfully. Though I don't think I'm always successful, I try to aspire to make my videos as decent quality as all of his. 
I would definitely recommend giving Doug's videos a look. There's a very good chance you'll get a good laugh out of them, and some food for thought at the same time. And my number one internet memory is... Dear Strongman, did you take your wrestling mask and boxing gloves off before you... Did the quadratic formula explode? Your super box needs wounds. Like these right here. So I'm gonna have to jump! <laughs> Backwards! What? Strong Bad and Homestar Runner. Not many people may remember Strongbad, as the site was mostly abandoned around 2009. However, this site remains a site I have often visited for an easy smile and a laugh over 11 years. The site starred a... running wide thing that didn't wear pants. Well, I have no idea what he actually is, but I know he's the Homestar Runner, and he's a terrific athlete. And for some reason, he always has a strange speech impediment. The last time I fired up one of my old Sega tapes, it made me a waffle. Strongbear was another star of the show who was another thing that wore a wrestling mask and checked emails that fans sent in. There wasn't really any premise to the show. The weekly flashes just consisted of Strongbad and Homestar interacting with a small group of people in their couple of acres world. And that was all the world really needed. Just watching these unique characters interact kept us entertained and invested for hundreds and hundreds of flashes. And they give me a smile even to this day. Would you believe the animator and creator of the site did every single voice for every single character? Well, obviously except for Marzipan, who was voiced by his girlfriend. What made Strong Bear great was this site was just so... unique. There was this one time where I had to hug a tree. Keep on hugging it. How did you get me to do this in the first place? Hug it. Hug it. And why do I continue to do it? Keep on hugging it. Hug it down. I don't even like this tree that much. Going to HomestarRunner.com just felt like you were escaping into an entirely different world. This refreshingly simple and pleasant world. For me, anyway, I still find myself popping through the site for a quick chuckle even to this day. They also produced a fantastic point-and-click game series with Telltale Games which I also thoroughly enjoyed every minute of. I just can't think of another character that has just brought me so much joy and laughs over the years. Ah, that is not a small number! There's been rumours going around that the creator is actually going to start updating the site again, and I'm looking forward to spending a little more time in the world of Strong Bad and Homestar Runner. So that's pretty much how it all went down, huh? Oh yes, we'd be another one. Another one! Oh, very well. I call these internet memories, but every single one of these creators is still producing regular new content that is often a breath of fresh air among a sea of Let's Plays mostly consisting of angry kids swearing into their microphones. But the good content has always been there. Often we just have to look in the right direction. Thank you for all the support over the last year, everyone. Hearing from you guys is what makes these videos really fun for me. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Flash animations about assassinations, ultra-violence, and everything controversial about our modern society. A place where any Flash animator could express their opinions. Nowadays, it's become a lot more mainstream and has been cleaned up quite a bit. Internet sensations like Ego Raptor started off here before YouTube essentially took over the world. Nowadays, it just feels like every Flash animator on the site just does Pokemon flashes with Ego Raptor style faces. Don't get me wrong, it's still got tons of talented Flash animators on the site, and if you've ever tried it, Flash animation is really tough to do well. But sadly, it all mostly gets posted to YouTube whether the creator likes it or not. Pretty much every talented Flash animator I've ever heard of started on Newgrounds. And there's a reason for that. It's the deviant art of Flash animation. A melting pot of Flash animations from every walk of life. I recommend giving the site a visit. Number 8. Screw Attack. I can't help it. I just get such a chuckle out of these guys. They started doing silly short clips about video games years ago, and eventually moved on to massive successes like... 
I don't know if you've heard of Death Battle. These guys started the top 10 craze before it was even popular. This episode of Death Battle is brought to you by Slim Jim. Nowadays, I tend to get put off by their excessive marketing and product placement, but these guys were a great internet memory for me. These guys have been making me laugh for years on end, and I hope they keep producing stuff. Number 7. Years. While some people may find his videos a little too crass and narcissistic at times, he's provided me with a lot of laughs over the years. You can pretty much always be sure you're going to see the negative side of a game when you watch his reviews, which is kind of refreshing in a sea of large company organizations like GameSpot and IGN that just seem to throw 10 out of 10s at every massive game company out there. Like him or hate him, Yahtzee has done a lot of insightful reviews over the years, and I still get a good laugh out of his videos. Number 9. Newgrounds.com This one's a really old one, so some of you might not have heard of it. The old Newgrounds slogan was, The problems of the future, today. And that is exactly what it was. It was a wild west of dark f Please note the disclaimer. A lot of us didn't grow up on TV sitcoms or movies that much. Many of us grew up on flash animations or internet characters. Many of these internet memories bring me a smile and a laugh, even to this day. So today, I'd like to honor these memories with a list of the top 10 internet memories. Many of these creators still produce regular content to this day. I'll post a link to each number in the description in case you are interested in checking them out. Anyway, sit back and enjoy the countdown. Number 10. Yahtzee Zero Punctuation. A lot of these internet sensations tend to fly under the radar, but I can't seem to find any friends under 40 who haven't at least heard of Yahtzee. He's been doing short video game reviews for the last six to seven years. Angry Video Game Nerd. Cinemassacre, AVGN, whatever you want to call him. James Rolfe has been doing videos for nearly 10 years now. I almost think it's a shame he's become so popular because I really like his reviews but I just don't care about the AVGN merchandise, video games, or the movies. I just enjoy watching a guy with a passion for video making keep doing what he loves. But sadly, a bit like Frozen, I tend to get tired of being swamped by fan hype and merchandise. AVGN started doing reviews about consoles and video games before his popularity just exploded. Something about AVGN just swearing like a sailor as he cursed his way through the worst video games in history was very charming and pleasant to watch. I mean, would you really